One of the most popular videos on my channel was my budget home server video, where I built an eight core 16 thread server for just under $500 using an old Xeon processor and a cheap X79 Chinese motherboard. Honestly, that system has performed great over the last year, so I figured let's kick it up a notch. When browsing for some more Chinese motherboards, I found a dual socket X99 board with a solid array of IO and PCI slots. My mind said, you don't need another computer. You legit have like six of them stacked up right over there. However, my impulse control was like, bro, you could totally put two 16 core CPUs in there. Obviously my mind was correct and I didn't buy anything. Thank you for watching. Okay, yeah, I uh, built a 32 core 64 thread processor and honestly, I kind of regret it. All right, let's put this thing down. Look how freaking massive this is. Okay. Whew. Yes, I can already hear you guys now. Aw, oh, poor YouTuber. Built a server for content and regrets it. Wham, playing the world's smallest violin. Well, yeah, you're half right. Originally, I wanted a new test server for testing out lots of different hypervisors, operating systems, and to mess with a bunch of cool PCI pass-through stuff. So for that, I would need lots of cores, check and a good amount of PCI slots, check. And I'm still very far from breaking even with my YouTube channel, so I didn't wanna spend a lot of money, kind of check. The motherboard can be found for around $250, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the position of Orion's belt, but the CPUs were only about $100 each, which puts us around $450 for the core of the system. Not bad considering I already had a power supply, case, and some RAM. Man, this thing sounds pretty freaking awesome so far, right? Kinda. However, there were two main issues that came up. One was more of a major annoyance, while one is a deal breaker. Let's start with the annoyance. You see, this motherboard is EATX, so it's quite large, but I'm no stranger to handling large things, so I wasn't worried about it. The problem here is that it's not actually EATX. Well, I mean, it might be, I don't know how lenient the standards are, but you have to have a pretty freaking massive case to fit the entirety of this board. There are some large cases out there that it will fit in if you wanna sacrifice some of the IO or PCI slots, but I didn't really wanna do that. I wanted to do this right. Now, after spending more time researching cases than I did picking my degree, I ended up with the Fractal Design Meshify 2 XL, the exact case I'm using just in the other room for my main server. So why this case? Well, it's got nine PCI slots, which is the exact amount you need if you want this board to line up properly and not lose any access to any slots. Now find me another nine slot case under $200. Exactly. So yeah, that was annoying. I had to drop $200 on a giant ass case even though I had like four EATX compatible cases just laying around. All right, no worries. It all fits nicely now and boots up fine. We ran some benchmarks and got some fairly impressive scores for these being eight year old CPUs. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention earlier, I am running dual Xeon 2698 V3s, which are 16 core 32 thread processors. This combined with lots of PCI lanes, crap ton of SATA three ports, dual NVMe slots, USB 3.0, dual gigabit LAN, and a case big enough to serve as a dinner table should be enough to make me a happy camper, right? Well, for one thing, this dude is power hungry. At idle, it pulls 150 watts from the wall. 150 watts while doing nothing but sending all my personal data to Google. If you thought that it gets better as we hit it with a load, then I don't know what to tell you. Running Geekbench, I saw the power usage spike up to over 450 watts, and that's only with a single hard drive installed and a low power GT 1030. So yeah, I mean, it's no 12900K with a 3090 Ti, but man, just for a test system, I don't wanna be just casually pulling 200 watts. But that's not the deal breaker. Remember how I said I wanted to use this machine to test a bunch of operating systems and do some PCI pass-through? Well, you can't. This board will not let you enable IOMMU in the BIOS. The chips support it, but the motherboard does not. And if you thought, oh, maybe there's a BIOS update. <laughs> 
no. After finding this out, I was legit demoralized and debating just selling off the parts and sacking off the entire video, but the show must go on and you guys need to see that not everything on this channel goes as planned. The worst part though is that when I was planning to do this, I saw that Jeff from Craft Computing did the same thing, but I purposely didn't watch his video because I didn't want his opinions to subconsciously affect my thoughts on this entire build. But after all these issues I was having, I had to go watch his video. Now, guess what issues he ran into? Go ahead, guess. Yep, the motherboard being some kind of Walmart brand EATX standard and not supporting IOMMU. <sighs> So here I am with a 32 core, 64 thread power hungry server that I can't use for the main thing I wanted to use it for. Now what? Well, obviously it's not a worthless system. Just because I can't pass through an HBA or a GPU doesn't mean it's trash. If you're looking for a beastly true mass scale system, then this might be right up your alley. With the horsepower to handle a large ZFS configuration and enough left over to spin up a bunch of VMs and services, you'd be hard pressed to find a better setup for the price. Right now, I just have Ubuntu desktop installed with a decent GPU, and I'm actually editing this entire video on it. Uh, okay, so editor Brett here, and I have actually been editing this entire video on the 32 core system using DaVinci Resolve in Linux Ubuntu, and the performance has been pretty decent. I'd say it's certainly not an issue editing this footage. There are a couple of things to note though. Um, one being that I am using 4K ProRes 422 footage. So it's not really CPU intensive to use ProRes. So I didn't really expect it to have much issues. One thing not really related to the server at all, but using DaVinci in Linux, you can't use standard like H.264 Codex. You have to encode everything into ProRes or what's the other one? D, DV, X, D, X, V, whatever. So that's extremely inconvenient because all my B-roll is shot on my FX3, which does H.264 or H.265, one of the two. But the server itself has no problem handling the editing. I am just running into issues with uh, DaVinci Resolve and Linux. Not that a lot of you even care, but uh, yeah, I just figured I'd let you guys know my experiences editing on my 32 core system. Oh, and I'm using a uh, RTX 3060 Ti to help with some uh, graphics rendering and hardware encoding and stuff for exporting. So yeah, pretty decent. Also, since I'm running Linux as my host OS, we still have access to all the fun virtualization features with KVM. I have multiple Linux distros virtualized on here to test out and play around with without having to worry about taking resources from my main server or worry about bricking anything. Another idea I had for this machine was to use it as a proxy creator for my YouTube footage. Having a machine dedicated to automatically creating proxies for me when I upload the footage would be a great use case for this. Also, since we do have a decent GPU in here, it could be used to game. I mean, the performance isn't gonna blow you away considering these are eight-year-old Xeons with pretty subpar single core performance compared to today's standards, but it works. So what was the point of this video? Honestly, I'm not sure. I wanted a new test server for testing PCI pass-through and that was a failure the system as a whole is still pretty cool. I don't really have any major conclusion here other than to advise you to do more research than I did before buying parts, especially when you have a specific goal in mind. Would I suggest you go with this build here? I mean, maybe. If you don't care about IOMMU and you have a big chonking case to throw the system in, then for the price, you're getting a ton of virtualization power. The best use case I can see for something like this is either a VM slash service farm to host a crap ton of virtualization projects, or, and hear me out on this, is an all-in-one desktop server NAS system. Having this many cores gives you the ability to run a lot of stuff while also having resources left over to run a desktop environment. If your electricity bill can handle it, then hey, why not? Let me know down in the comments what you want to see me do with this for my next video now that I've shown you how much of a failure I am. All right, it is time for comment of the week. This one comes on my five minute review of the Steam Deck and this comment comes from 
the young Highland lad. Kinky. Great video, dude. I was skeptical off the bat about ergonomics and you confirmed my fears, but for what it is, it seems like a cool device if you are a diehard handheld gamer. Yeah, that's kind of the conclusion I came up with in my review. It is a cool device for what it is, a handheld gaming device, and especially for the price, it's really solid. Now, there are some growing pains with it with the UI and just some general software bugs in general, but it is very early release. It is hardware version number one, so you know there's always gonna be issues coming up with things like that. But overall, I do think the Steam Deck is a great little device. I know it's hard to get right now, but if you can get one retail and you're really into handheld gaming, then I think it's pretty sweet. But thank you, Mr. The Young Highland Lad. I appreciate your comment. Okay, that is all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this build and why I'm a dumbass for building it. If anything, I hope you learned something from my experience. And if you did, then drop a like. And if you just wanna see my beard more or something, then maybe subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreons and YouTube members and also apologize that your support went to this. Oops. You guys are the peanut butter to my jelly. And for those of you that are still around, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.